if we were to try to summarize that scripture and put it on the, maybe one picture or one slide, we'd probably start with the, the statement that Jesus is the light of the world. He's, he's the light. And uh, that's a very interesting passage. Um, on a Sunday, not too long ago, we talked about how um, John, as he's describing the birth of Jesus, he takes a very different approach than the, the simple telling of the story of uh, Mary becoming pregnant as a virgin and thinking, oh my goodness, what's going to happen? And then Joseph, not sure what's going on, and, but eventually saying, well, this is from God. And then, then them traveling to Bethlehem and having the baby there, John just simply says, you know, that, that the light that enlightens all people was coming into the world. The word was made flesh, and that light then dwelled among us, and that light is Jesus. He's among us even now. As we think about that, and we think about um, the importance of that, I've had time to, to reflect on that and get a little bit philosophical because I've been sick over the past couple of weeks, and I go very philosophical when I get sick. Uh, if you have been sick in the past couple of weeks or if somebody in your family has been sick in the past couple of weeks, would you raise your hand? Isn't that encouraging? Now, that's actually going to come into play very, very strongly in our message here for today because we're going from darkness to light. Now, that is a really big deal if the darkness was real and it was a big deal and it was very bad. Now, that, here's an interesting thing that as I was getting very philosophical and as I was watching uh, more TV than I would normally watch and, uh, you know, and, and watching some stuff on Netflix and this time of year we watch documentaries on um, the birth of Jesus. You know, you may notice this is the time of the year when they start playing such things and, and on this particular documentary as I was watching it, um, it was really trashing just the whole story, you know, skepticism about all the different elements and stuff. And if you've watched TV or if you've read, you know, kind of widely, you know that, yeah, there are all kinds of controversial things about it and so forth. And one of the things that really struck me in this particular documentary was each of the interviewers, and they were big name people, and if I mentioned some of them, you'd know, you know, perhaps some of their books and so forth, some very prominent atheists that are very, very learned, and I have great respect for their, their learning, that kind of thing. But their view of darkness in the world was very weak. Their view was that if we could get rid of religion, move it out of the way, get, get God kind of out of the way, we would be so much better off. And that, that type of thinking comes from an idea that there really isn't that much darkness in the world. It's really not that bad. And it's God that actually brings the badness. And that's a very ironic kind of statement when we start thinking about, is there darkness in this world? Because if there is darkness in this world, I'd like to have some light. Now, I shared with the kids a little bit about my phobia of being afraid of the dark, and I was serious about that from the time I was little. You know, I don't know what happened. Maybe my parents shut me in a closet or something. I had good parents, but, you know, we make mistakes. I don't know if that's what happened or not. But anyway, I um, haven't been a big fan. But then as I got older and as I started reading and as I started watching the news and I started talking with people from other countries, and I would find out what has gone on in some of these other countries. I was in downtown Lexington, Kentucky, and I was talking with a guy from Bosnia about the background of Bosnia. Now, if you know Bosnia, you've had genocide in Bosnia. I mean, you, they have seen evil face to face, people slaughtering other people, horrible stuff. And as I talked with a guy from Africa, and he was telling me about the same types of things that had happened there and how he has looked at people, and it's just been like pure evil coming at them. And I mean, just crazy, crazy, horrible stuff. And then as I thought about the, the sicknesses and stuff, I think, oh my goodness, you know, this world is broken. And you start putting that together. Where, where is the hope? And it's interesting that our, our faith is built on the entire idea that God is good and wants to bring goodness into the world. And this whole idea that my body, even though it breaks down now and lets me down now, will be remade in the resurrection from the dead. And how do I believe in that? Well, that's the Easter story. I believe that Jesus rose from the dead and said, you know what, I will do that for you as well. And it's, it's a powerfully good story if the darkness is real and if I can't really do anything about it, I need God's help and intervention. So it was interesting, in this documentary then, um, they mentioned Justin Martyr, 
which I was excited because I was like, I'd read some of his stuff. I know some of what he wrote, you know, in about 150 A.D. And they, they mention that, um, that he talked about in 150 A.D. Now, think about that. It's a long time ago, Justin Martyr. And I'm giving you really, really good Christmas gift ideas. So if you haven't bought something for your loved one, on, on Kindle or, you know, something like that, you could do a download of Justin Martyr's writings, early Christianity, good stuff, you know. You've got the night before Christmas, and then kids, let's sit around, let's read Justin Martyr's first apology. It'd be brilliant. You know, we'll try that. We'll try that tonight, right? Um, but, but here's the idea. He looked through early beliefs. Oh, we've got Mithra, we've got... Um, Bacchus, we've got Dionysus, we have Osiris, and different, different people believed in different gods at this time when Justin Martyr was writing. And he looked at them and he said, you know what? Some of your gods said they were the son of God. And some of your gods said they were born of a virgin, and some of your gods said they were the son of the king of the universe. But I want you to know that I know the real one, and that though evil and demons and Satan have tried to mislead us throughout the centuries to go our own way, now God has revealed to us the truth. Evil has always tried to pervert the truth and bring more darkness, but here's the truth. And then he went into saying, and by the way, our leader Jesus also taught us, love people, love our enemies. Do good to those around us. Share with those around us. And he started speaking and preaching at a time that then ended up getting him killed for believing in that Jesus. And his writings predicted even our ongoing debate today. It's not new. It's not cutting edge. We're still trying to figure all this stuff out. And it was interesting that this documentary looked at this guy and said, what an idiot. And I'm sitting there going, wait a second, this guy was brilliant. He knew the evil in the world. He knew the darkness of the world. He knew that we needed hope and that God has sent that hope in Jesus. And he will give us hope and triumph over things. Then it makes sense that some of our friends from Africa now talk about in places like Rwanda where brothers and sisters were killing each other, now how they have forgiven their killers. And you can travel there today. It's a very real story, and there has been peace and reconciliation and forgiveness. Lightness has come into the darkness. And maybe you need that here today. As I've heard about what goes on in some of our lives, I realize you want hope. You want light to come into your, the darkness. I recently talked with a, a funeral director, and I said, you know, there seems to have been a trend, even in my lifetime in ministry, where families at the death of a loved one start fighting, and they start fighting over who's going to get what, you know, and all this stuff. And I said, is that, have you noticed that? And she said, that's the general rule. It's the exception to have a family that in a time of crisis like that gets along and bands together and loves each other. I said, what? We need light in the darkness. And Jesus has provided that. He has come to us. Emmanuel, the Son of God, has dwelt among us. And you get the opportunity then to light up the world around you. So maybe you need to hear that even though your husband may say he doesn't care about you, he may call you names, and you need to come into this place today and to hear us say, you're a beloved daughter of God. You are beautiful, and there is a family resemblance between you and your heavenly father. He loves you. He thinks you're special. And maybe you're a guy, and you, you know, your boss is just riding your tail, and he's just like, you know, there's nothing you can do to make, make that boss happy. And you feel like you're a failure, and you feel like you're not providing enough for your family, and you're thinking about stuff under the tree, and you're like, man, I wish it was more. And maybe you need to hear that your heavenly father is the richest man in the universe, and you are the richest in the universe, because you're inheriting an eternal kingdom. And so what's under the tree is just a token of what you're getting in eternity. And if you're offering your family eternal life, you're giving them the greatest gift that they could ever possibly have. And God is proud of you, and you're a child of God, and you're a son of God. So I hope and pray that in this place you would be encouraged to know the light of the world is coming into our darkness, giving us hope, giving us a future, giving us forgiveness and love, and you get to live that out in your community where you live and bless your family, bless your friends. Let's pray. God, we pray 
that in a few minutes when we start lighting candles and start singing to you, that the people that are here that need to have hope would have that fire of your Holy Spirit dwell among them and fall upon them and encourage them. Lord, people that are distressed and they're worried, Lord, would you bring about a great healing and encouragement here? Help them to know that they are beloved by you and they're inheriting an eternal kingdom. God, we love you and we put ourselves into your hands. In Jesus' name we pray.